Big picture takeaways from Saturday night. You, you did podcast Sunday that, that dropped late yesterday afternoon with, with these are the things that are true. Give me something good and then maybe something less good. To, to give you something good, you, you really have to play the ifs and buts game, right? You have to look and say, you know, if State doesn't turn the ball over, then. But State does turn the ball over. You know, they, they made two bad – Rodgers makes two terrible throws, and that's that's the difference in the game. I mean, it, it's 14 points for Alabama in a game that State loses by 17. So, that you know, the, the ifs and buts are, hey, you, you had more success against Alabama than you've had recently. You ran the ball kind of effectively in the first half. Defensively in the second half, you held them without a touchdown. I mean, you see what I'm getting at here. It's like there's not a lot of – Overwhelming positives. You got it's, it's really, really small victories in there for Mississippi State. the the bad The bad big takeaway is is Arnett, and I found it interesting to watch him today. Removed, you know, forty some odd hours from the loss, and he's just up there, you know, as professional and and calm and collected as he could be, you know. He was asked about being angry, and he's like, I am angry. And I really thought for a second he might delve into that that Arnett personality that I used to know. You know, I've said it a few times here on this show that when he became the head coach, his personality changed, at least his public-facing personality changed. You know, he was always a gruff, angry defensive coordinator, and now he's a little bit more smiley and a little bit more coach-speak. The, the, the analogy I made on the the podcast was, Sometimes he gives answers that sounds like one of us trying to give a coach speak answer. Like it doesn't sound like it's actually coming from a coach. It sounds like somebody who's trying to act like they are a coach. And uh, and Arnett's a good coach. He's a good defensive coordinator. He's a good good a good football coach. But man, he was so flustered and frustrated Saturday night. And I think we're going to hear the audio later. Uh, which will have to be edited audio, unfortunately, because uh, once again, Zach Arnett uh, decided to grace us with a little profanity. Uh, he, he just doesn't seem to have, like, I understand there, there are times where coaches don't have the answers, right? Joe Moorhead didn't have answers, a lot of the questions we asked him. But Joe Moorhead would give you an answer that made it sound like he had an answer, if that makes sense. Yeah. He's he made it sound like he's like, yeah, I, yeah, he sounded like, I know what the problem is, and this is how we're going to fix it, and next week this won't be an issue. It would be an issue the next week, but he at least made you think that. Arnett's just up there like, I don't know. He's giving you a little bit of that Lamonis from, from last year. Remember when Lamonis would say stuff like, I don't know, I don't know what the problem is? Kind of the same thing. So I think when you catch Arnett in the moment right after a loss, he's just too raw. He's just too, he's just too overwhelmed by the anger and frustration of losing to be up there. It's tough. And that the the answer that we highlighted earlier though, that, that that speaks a lot because that probably does come from a position of I want to protect my player. Yes. That shouldn't be your sole motive. You can't protect your players all the time. And and when you stand behind the podium and tell your fans, I made a mistake when I when you didn't, why do you think you made a mistake now? This this is a veteran quarterback. This is a multi-year starter. It's okay to say we can't have a turnover there. Yeah, he's too experienced to do that. He shouldn't do that. Yeah, it's okay yeah. to say that. And instead, now fans are. I mean, when I hear that, I think that. I mean, does he? It's a stupid question because he obviously is much smarter than I am in football. But I thought, does he know what he's doing? If you think that you were wrong there to try to push the football down the field with time in a veteran quarterback, do you know what you're doing? And fans had that reaction as, well, Well, this guy clearly is over his head. Be confident in the decisions that you make, even if they end up being wrong. Correct decisions don't always have win results. And so to... to, to to backtrack on an innocuous decision like that concerns me, frankly. So, so a couple of things from the ceasefire text line. One, we'll, we'll do one morning on this. Don't drop an F bomb on us on the ceasefire text line. Just don't. Okay. We're, we're more than happy to engage. 
you didn't like the question that I asked, and so you tell me that we are idiots. Pointed at me. You don't have to point it at everybody. There's a reason, though, that I was asking the question, is there something good? Because I can't quite wrap my mind around what to make of the rest of Mississippi State's schedule. Like, there's part of me that looks at the remaining schedule for Mississippi State and goes, they're going five and seven. They're going to beat Western Michigan. They're going to beat Southern Miss. And I think they're going to get one more. Yeah. And that one more is probably Auburn. I would say it's probably Arkansas, but it's in those two those two games. Fayetteville's just a weird place to go to play a football game. It is. Game. But, but maybe you're right. But then I also can look at the schedule and go, well, again, they're sitting at two and three. They're going to beat Western Michigan. They're going to beat Southern Miss. That's four. They could theoretically beat Arkansas and Auburn. That's six. And sometimes the Egg Bowl gets weird. I don't see a scenario where it's – I honestly don't see a scenario where they get to seven. Honestly. Yeah, it would be – But I certainly don't a see huge a scenario turnaround where it's point. more than seven. Yeah, it, it would be a huge turnaround. Well, that's the funniest, the funniest part of this whole thing to me is this is exactly where I predicted State to be at this point. My prediction was to be two and three at this point. But, you but they haven't they played like, like a, this. I, exactly, exactly. You know, I, Alabama was always a wait and see. I, you know, whatever happened in that game just happened. But the way they played against LSU, especially when you watch LSU Saturday, give up giving up seven hundred yards, and State could only get two hundred on them. I mean, that's not good. So, right. State has a lot of of systemic issues. It's not just one guy. I mean, as Rogers is not playing well, there's no getting around that fact. But it's not just Rodgers either. They, they, they played well enough defensively in this game to, I don't think you could say win, but to make it more competitive. They didn't play well enough defensively at all against South Carolina. They didn't play great defensively. They didn't play well on any side of the ball against LSU. Against, Ar- against Arizona, if they don't force five turnovers, and forcing turnovers, there's a bit of luck in there when you look at State's defense and you don't point to an Emmanuel Forbes. When you can't just look at a guy and say, okay, well, he's a first-rounder, so he's going to get turnovers. You, know, you had two, 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 three interceptions by the linebackers. That is not something that usually happens. So, I mean, if they don't get five turnovers, if they only give up, if they only have four, they might not win that game. So they just have not played. Even in the game against Southeast Louisiana, they didn't play well. They started slow, and then they, 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 they finally got things going in the second half. But there's not been a game where State's played good for four quarters all season long. So they have they have issues that are just bigger than stuff that you could correct in 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 one week. And yeah, I think this is the, the timing of the schedule kind of works for them. You get Western Michigan this week. That should be a get right game in terms of just seeing yourself execute and and score some points and win the game. And you go have a happy locker room. Then you have a bye week to get some things hopefully sorted out and then you go to Arkansas. So you've got like this two-week period to just try to figure some things out. Because, yeah, right now it's just about getting the six wins. It's an oversimplification. But but you said it. There were periods of time in that game where it could have looked and felt differently. And they turned the football over. Sometimes quarterback's not to blame for a team's troubles. I, I mean, if you put... Jaden Daniels on Mississippi State uh, on Saturday night. Do they beat Alabama? They play them a heck of a lot closer, have a much better chance. But point being, the quarterback's not the only issue. Right. But when you are playing yourself out of a game at that position, you have to do something different. Whether it's with how you call the game, whether it's scheme, whether you put him in different positions to make plays, or whether you let the guy, the, the supreme athlete, take some snaps and have a full drive. I know there are other issues, but a lot of those other issues are, are not correctable right now. You, you can at least try something personnel-wise at that position to mm-hmm. give yourself something offensively. 
because 100 yards and, through the air and three turnovers, Mike Wright, could he could have done much better than that on, on Saturday night. He could have given you more than that. you got to try and something. That, and, and look, he might not have been any better through the air, but he, he would have given you something on the ground, at least. On some of those plays that broke down, Rodgers could give you something on the ground. And one other thing that I've, I've seen people saying, I know i only got a couple seconds here, people are saying, oh, well, you know, they knew this was going to be it. No! No. Nobody knew this was going to be this kind of year. No, Now, nobody at Mississippi State was saying rebuild, young team, playing for the future. None of that. This is a senior-laden football team. They expected to win this year. And in, in fact, when Borky and I kind of brought up some of the, well, what about this and what about this, you, you kind of pushed back on that a little bit. I did. And, and I thought did. it was going to be a fairly seamless transition. To the, uh, to, to the friend on the C Spire text line who, uh, who reached out and, and said, to the guy talking the most, Assume that means me. Nobody expects you to get every prediction. But if you're getting paid to talk about the two schools' games, at least watch the games, which you obviously didn't stay up and watch State, given all the blunders and awkward pauses so far. Couldn't you have at least watched a recording if past your bedtime? <laughs> he also got it's, me there because I said they lost by 17. They, they did lose by 23. They the, scored the, 17. The, the awkward pauses and, well, first of all, I'm, I mean, my most sincere apologies. I I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive my mistake. As I read, I was looking for a specific timestamp in a play-by-play slash box score from a game, and I read the wrong time. And then I was trying to correct myself because it didn't sound right, and so I was looking for something different to do that. Um, But but, but I I erred. I, I made a mistake, and... I, you know, I can, I can only ask that you can find it in your heart to over, uh, overlook that mistake. And yes, I watched the game, you moron. I watched the first quarter of it while I was calling another game. I watched the next two quarters in a sports bar where I was trying to eat dinner in the last quarter in my hotel room, had it on my phone in between places. <laughs> Jeez. Chase is right on the text line, by the way. So he's right about his take on the quarterback, Chase, but we're, we're short on time, so we'll, we'll jump to this. But, I mean, you, I remember you. You've been talking about this for two years, and, and we have to a degree as well. But he said, the complete absence of a defensive line and pass rush, no one saw that coming. You're exactly right. There's a difference between projecting a season wrong and what happening on the field not making sense. Like, there was a path to Mississippi State not being good. We talked about it this offseason, that rookie head coach transitioned to a new offense, uh, replacing an entire secondary, including a first-round pick who was covering A.J. Brown yesterday in the NFL. I mean, there were reasons to think that it, it, it might not go well. But one of those reasons being they are undisciplined, sloppy up front on defense, and they don't generate pass rush. That, that should not be something that we are saying about this team yeah. right now. There was no reason. There's no reason for them to look like this right now. That's correct. There, no, uh, if, if you told me State was going to be bad, let's, if you had told me State at this point was going to be bad, which, you know, record-wise, it would have still been the same, but whatever, I would have immediately just said, okay, obviously, Rodgers, it's, it's not working offensively. And, I, and you're right about that. Rodgers is not playing well, but nobody could have foreseen this, this defense falling apart the way that it has. They lost a lot of players, but they returned a lot of players. And they had hit the transfer portal, and you thought they had been successful in that endeavor, getting guys into the secondary, but it has not been the case thus far. Yeah. Yeah. It, it just it doesn't add up. It, 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 I'm sorry. Go ahead. It just, you, you wonder if the, having the – total responsibility as a head coach is taking away from that which was a strength for this team a year ago you know what I mean I wanted to bring something up on Will Rogers a second ago I wonder what's going on in his head now I understand that Alabama has a good defense LSU really doesn't he was not good throwing the ball against LSU had one of his poorest games. I guess it was his single poorest game as a quarterback at Mississippi state. 
And then he grows out and throws for like 7,000 yards against South Carolina. But it wasn't the number, right? It wasn't the 400. What was it, 486? Was it was that the number? It, it wasn't that he threw for that many yards. It was the confidence and the poise with which he delivered the football throughout the entirety of that game. And then you get to this one. And, Al, again, Alabama's defense is good. Mm-hmm. That, that front four is – not the best they've had, but the back seven is really good. But none of the confidence and the poise that you saw a week before was there. And it's not like he just had a clean pocket for the entire game against well, South Carolina. And this is Will Rogers, one of the most experienced quarterbacks in the country. You just expect more consistency. And I asked Arnett about that today at the press conference. I said he sandwiched his best game ever around his worst two games ever. And that's what's happened these last three weeks. His worst two statistical games, his best st- statistical game. I, I don't expect that from Will Rogers. I don't expect that roller coaster. I expect a lot more steadiness. Yeah. And, and I guess that's what I'm getting at is like, I, I don't really understand why. Well, and I hate to, to say it like this, but did you watch South Carolina play defense on Saturday night? They're not very good at it. They're not good. Yeah. They're not good. That's right. South Carolina's not a good team. 